Neil Andrews. Now, what's the matter? Oh, this sandwich. I gave you a chicken salad, didn't I? Yes, but the size of it, I mean. These evening snacks of ours are turning into banquets. Now, look, honey, a few calories won't hurt anyone. No pickle? No, I'm sorry, I couldn't find any. Will you be wanting your lunch pack tomorrow? You betcha. We're starting that Parker project tomorrow, and the whole place will be crawling with bathtubs. We got 2,000 full baths to put in, 1,500 three-quarter baths, and 500 half baths. Who in the world would want only a half bath? Ah, oh, come on, Jenny. Now, you know each house always has a full bath. And then again, a half bath. That might be just dandy for the people that don't have time to take a full bath. <laughs> if they decide to take a full bath, then I'll have to just go through twice. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it at the shop yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I didn't like it. Hello? Oh, just a minute. It's for you. Oh, thank you. It's a woman. Oh, a woman. <laughs> yes, this is Neil Andrews. Who is it? What does she want? Yes, I'm the plumber. Oh, I'm so glad, Mr. Andrews. I've been calling and calling you the first plumber I found. It's... it's a terrible emergency, if you know what I mean. Do you think you could help me, Mr. Andrews, please? Yes, I'd be very glad to help you, miss. Who is she? I'm... Honey, it's a woman. This is business. But you can't go out tonight. Oh, doll. Yes, doll. Uh, yes, lady. <laughs> no, if I go out tonight, it usually isn't worth it to the customer. But please, Mr. Andrews, won't you help me, please? You'll... You'll be very well paid. There's just new men around here I can turn to. Well, lady, I, I, I can't very well refuse you. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Andrews. You just have no idea. Oh, oh, the address? Well, I'm sending a man to pick you up. Just one more thing. Don't wear your work clothes. Just come as you are. Yes. I'm... <laughs> as I am. Well, what I mean is, just wear a business suit. You'll be paid extra if anything happens to it. Now, you'll be ready in 15 minutes. Nighty night. Good night. Neil, do you realize it's 11 o'clock? Oh, honey, I could hardly say no. I mean, after all, this poor girl, the way she was talking to me, the water was already up to her chin and slowly rising. Well, I'll bet when you get there, you'll find it's no emergency. Neil, that's your good white shirt. Oh. I didn't tell you. She told me to wear my good clothes. <gasps> Sounds a little peculiar, doesn't it? Well, the next thing you know, they'll be asking you to go formal. You know, this, this sounds odd to me. Look, it was just a woman. That's what worries me. Oh, doll. Look, where's my laundry? Oh, here it is. Now, look, honey, I don't want you to get yourself upset. I mean, after all, this is one of those phone calls, you know, from a rich lady who possibly don't even know how to turn the tap off. Now, you get back in bed and relax. Go ahead. But it's not that she's just a woman. Lots of things could happen. Now, you be careful. I will. Night. Hello. Are you uh, Neil Anders? Andrews. Well, my name is Joe Kendorf. The boss sent me. The boss? Who's the boss? Uh, he's a man named Wicker. Here. He sent you these. Oh. 300 bucks. That's right. Uh, this is a little over my usual fee. Uh, how long is this job going to take? Oh, about an hour or two. That's the way the boss does things. I know. The boss... The boss... She... Listen, it was a lady that called me. Oh, yeah, yeah. And is she sore because you're not there yet? We better get rolling. Yeah. Are these your tools? Uh, yeah, but I won't need them all. Well, that's no trouble. I have a station wagon. Oh, fine. <laughs> well, if you're ready, we'll go to Larchmont. Larchmont? For this kind of money, I'd go to the moon. <laughs> Say, Larchmont is northeast of my place. Well, I guess you didn't hear me right. I said the uh, Larchmont Hotel. Oh. But I'm an outside plumber. Hotels have their own. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> What's the matter? Did I say the secret word? Now, I know this sounds strange, but Let's the boss... Let's cut the glove. 
It's this way, Cupid doll. You either listen quiet like and come along like a good boy or take a sap behind the ear. Well? I do not want a sap behind the ear. Don't get cute. You cooperate and know you want some action. No, sir, I'm a peaceful man. Oh, I knew we'd have no worry about this one. I know these chumps. No nerve at all. What's she doing? We got some classy looking suitcases. That's where he's putting your tools. How come? That's a desk clerk. He might wonder about them crummy looking boxes of yours. The boss thought of that. I guess that's why I'm wearing a suit instead of overalls. Now you get it. The boss thought of that too. Boy, they're sure making a big deal out of this. We got his tools, why don't we chuck him and do the job ourselves? What job? Listen, you smart mouth pipe wrestler, I'll bump you no, right... No, no, wait, I was just curious, I can wait. You will. Just remember, no trouble in the lobby. No, sir. Lie, 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 no trouble in the lobby. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, uh, Mr. Kendorf here will be staying with us tonight at 1114. Well, he ought to register. Oh, certainly. <laughs> it's awful late. You can't expect me to get another bed set up in there. I'm shorthanded right now. Oh, that's perfectly all right. We'll make out. the button. Maybe you'd like me to give you a couple of reps just to let you know we mean business. I wasn't thinking. Cut it out. The boss is waiting. At last. Welcome. Welcome. So good of you to come. Well, once I got in the car, I had no choice. Was there trouble? With him? Huh. A very explicit answer, Mr. Geller, thank you. Mr. Geller may seem a trifle uncouth, but he's quite essential. I've spent a great deal of time searching for a thoroughly mean person. You'd be amazed how difficult that is. These days, even the meanest men seem to have a, a pleasant streak in them. I think it's a sign of decadence, don't you? Oh, <laughs> yes. There's a little of everything and everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> A little of the hero and a little of the villain. As for our friend, I don't think that holds true. They say that as a youth, he made spending money by allowing people to strike matches on his face. <laughs> but I don't really believe that story, do you? Um, no, I, I guess not. I, no. Still, I have seen him do it to other people. But enough of this. I want to explain our position and your job here. Please, be seated. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, you haven't met the other member of our little group. This is our Mr. Adams. How do you do, Mr. Adams? How do you do? <laughs> He's dead. Of course, Mr. Andrews, there's nothing to become agitated about. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean is this the job you sent for me for? I'm a plumber, not a surgeon. You will have nothing to do with him, my friend. He's beyond all human help. And now, if you will have the decency to replace his head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joseph, place a sheet over the defunct Mr. Adams. We don't want our cherubic little plumber to become nervous. No, I... Hey! Now, come on! Please, be seated. I don't believe I've had time to mention it. I'm Leroy Favier. He told me your name was Wicker. He did? Yeah. How charming of him, and original. I've been underestimating Joseph. But, back to work. We shall begin by being absolutely frank with each other. Yeah, I haven't seen any frankness so far. Perhaps there have been a few uh, 
subtleties. Confusing, no doubt, from your point of view, but they've certainly demonstrated their value. How? You are here, aren't you? I can't argue with you on that. You will find it fruitless to argue with anything I have to say. My profession, Mr. Andrews, is one the public would consider quite the opposite of yours. You are a plumber. <laughs> I am a thief. You've probably heard of our latest exploit on the newscast tonight. I, I guess I missed it. You haven't heard of the big diamond robbery? You, you steal diamonds? Exactly, Mr. Andrews. Oh, you and I are going to get along famously together. I do love a man who can put two and two together. Oh. <laughs> Provided, of course, that he learns that he must... Ah, Gladys! Here is another member of our firm. Uh, Gladys's duties have never been clearly defined. Like calling plumbers on the phone? Exactly, Gladys. Mr. Andrews. How do you... Look do here, I'm drying my nails. <laughs> I don't succumb. I knew it. I never get to go out. When they go out, do you think they'd bring me back goom? The last time they went out, they brought back a half a million dollars worth of diamonds. And, and that one stick of goom. Oh. <laughs> I have some. Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Andrews. You're welcome. Hey, what are you trying to pull? I'll handle Mr. Andrews. Mr. Geller resents the way you lavish expensive gifts on Gladys. <laughs> and now about the job, Mr. Andrews. This way, please. Now, I shall reconstruct the scene. Picture, if you will, our little band clucking over our cache of diamonds in the living room. One of our group whom we shall call Adams. You mean that poor man out there? Precisely. As I was saying, the late Mr. Adams picks up the tray and moves with it toward the better light here in the bathroom. At just about the point where you are standing, my idiot underling stumbled over his own feet and poured my diamonds down the drain. Except for a pitiful few which we found on the floor, they all vanished like sand down a manhole. Mr. Andrews, observe the sink. It is ancient. The vulgar pipes have been discreetly covered. The odd-shaped curve... What do you call it? The trap. The trap is nowhere to be seen. Mr. Geller, who claims to know something about such matters, suspects the trap is somewhere in the floor. There would be a trap, wouldn't there? Oh, yes. To put it bluntly, Mr. Andrews, I want my diamonds back. I want them retrieved quietly, efficiently, and quickly. That's a pretty big order. Mr. Andrews, I did not bring you here to voice negative reactions. I am paying you well. But then you, too, have a great deal at stake. Your life. You mean if I can't? Yes, this will assure that you will. Picture your widow trying to reconstruct the story for the police. Her husband left home late one night on what he said was a service call from a young lady. Oddly enough, he wore his good clothes. Later, he checked into a midtown hotel carrying not tool chests, but luggage. The police being sophisticated and metropolitan, have heard the story before about many other married men. The only difference is that Neil Andrews apparently became remorseful and threw himself out of the window. <laughs> you mean that, that I, that, 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 he, oh, you wouldn't do that. No, not I. Thank you. But that's why I have Mr. Geller. Do you know that in all Mr. Geller's rather checkered career, he has never thrown anyone out of the window? Oh? And he's most anxious to try. Oh. You, you, you better get all of my tools. I'll get the work right away. Wonderful. You're a very sensible man, Mr. Andrews. Mr. Geller, bring the man his tools. And now, sir, you will receive every cooperation. Of course, we shall have a man at the door at all times. This uh, is sort of a cinder floor. A cinder floor? Yes, you see, when they built these hotels, they built them the last. First they used cement, then heavy planks. Then they would use cinders for sound deadening, then wood on top. Now, I will have to go through the wood so I can get to the elbow in the drain pipe. What about the tile? How far a flame will it throw? I hardly don't know. Mr. Andrews, like explicit answers. I want to be certain that thing can't be used as a weapon. Now. How long a flame would you say it can throw? Eight inches. 
That's better. Good. Now, I'll get the tile off. And when I get the tile off, I'll use the blowtorch so I can cut through the wood. You'll set the hotel on fire. Oh, no, you've got plenty of water around here. And uh, the wood won't flame. It just smolders. Don't bore me with details. Just get me those diamonds. Joseph, take a position by the door. Now, Mr. Andrews, I must take my little nap. I shall be back in a little while, and I shall expect to see great progress. Joseph will keep an eye on you. Come, Mr. Geller. I'll tell you it's different. What do you mean? Well, we'll take you. You're different. And I've never talked to diamond thieves before. That's nothing. I've never talked to a plumer before. <laughs> oh, that's cute. You're married, aren't you? How did you know? They always are. The nice ones, I mean. I'd like to marry and, and settle down. But I don't suppose I ever will. I think you will. Oh, I hope you're right. I hate being an accessory. A what? An accessory. You know, the boys, they're always being arrested. And the newspapers always say the same thing. Gladys Arnold was held as an accessory. <laughs> I've been an accessory for nearly five years now, and I'm tired of being an accessory. I want to tell you, you're one of the prettiest accessories i ever seen. I'll bet you don't know any more about accessories than you do about diamond thieves. Oh, well, what's the use? I'm not prepared for anything else. I mean, well, I'd like to be an actress or, or run a dude ranch. But I never went to college. Well? That looks like you could burn your way through the floor to the room below this. I don't think I ought to be here. Please, please don't. Where, where, where are the others? In the bedroom. Mr. Andrews, I am shocked. Don't you like it here? Oh, sure. But he's supposed to be dead now. How come? The boss thought of that. Yes, my flair for the dramatic. Also, I wanted to impress you with what happens to people who blunder, as you have done. I guess we've got to show you another way. Uh, by roughing you up a little. Mr. Geller. I just want to... <laughs> I burn myself. Nice 
still can't believe Mr. Andrews is the kind of person who would turn on us. That's what I've been saying. It's the dame that put him up to it. I didn't do nothing. She didn't have a thing to do with this. She saw him going and never let out a peep. I was scared. He wouldn't have the guts to do it himself. This is excellent. We can use Gladys as an example and still have a plumber who is whole and in good condition to get our gems. No, 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 no. Now, no. I'll let her alone. <laughs> Hold it, or I'll barbecue you. Uh, uh, Mr. Favier, I, I lied to you. I want to tell you about this blowtorch. It'll shoot a 10-foot flame. I told you we should have done the job ourselves. You never would have been able to do it. That sink has been in there for 50 years. And when it gets plugged, what do you think? They just rip up the floor to fix it? I could have done a job in five minutes. Why did you tear up the tile? I wanted to get to the floor below. When I saw that guy sleeping over there, I figured I'd go out the front door. <laughs> Hold it. Operator. Operator. I'm an 1114. I got the diamond thieves. That's what I said. I got the diamond thieves. Send up the police. What about me? S send up a package of gum. <laughs> Thank you. I Okay, honey? Oh, what a nightmare I had. Oh, I finished your sandwich after you left. Was there any trouble? Oh, no. Just something I had to get out of a dream. Come on, eh? I guess I was silly to worry. You sure were. It was just the usual thing, honey. Now, you get some sleep. You'll know all about it in the morning. You get some sleep, too. You can say that again. Tomorrow, I'm back on that Parker project, and I got a big day ahead of me. <laughs> Honey, would you like a piece of gum? Oh, Neil, don't be silly. 